Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Concordia, which turned out to be one of the big surprise hits at Essen 2013 this year. And I'm going to try and do a run through for it as best I can with my limited knowledge. I've only played it a little bit. Hopefully I know it well enough to give you an idea of what it plays like. Because wow, this game plays really smooth. So, let's play. Alright, now in this game, we are, I don't know, rich noble Roman families at the height of the power of the Roman Empire and we use our wealth and influence to help the Empire set up its colonial interests throughout all of Europe and Africa. So we are basically sending col colon you know, colonists out and once the colonists are out there we can set up colonies which allow us to generate goods which we can buy and sell on the open market to generate more colonies. That's like the main engine that's going on but there's a whole other element too, this kind of deck building element because we all start with seven cards. They represent all these different personalities like the Tribune and the Merchant, the Mercator and the Prefect. These are people, very powerful people in Rome that we have control over when we, we can exercise influence over them. And over the course of the game, we're not expanding our colonial power throughout Europe. We are also recruiting more people that we can influence to give us more actions over the course of the game. We actually have like kind of a very slow deck building component to the game as our deck of abilities gets bigger as we recruit more guys. So those are really the two things we're focusing on while paying attention to what the opponent is doing and all that. All to score points and win. Big picture, out of the way, let's go. Now, at the beginning of the game, I start with two colonists here in Rome, in Roma, a water-based one who, as you might imagine, can only move across the blue lines, and a land-based one, stand up buddy, a land-based guy who can only move across the land. So they're both limited in where they can move to help me set up colonies. I, as a first player, start with five Sisteri. I've got four more colonists that I may or may not recruit by the end of the game. We'll see how it goes. And I start with two food, a cloth, tools. These are all the various goods. Wine and bricks. So there's five types of goods. I start with one of each except for food, which I start with two of. Jen, she's in the same spot. She's got the same resources. She starts with six, because she's the second player. And also, since she's the last player, she gets the Prefectus Magnus card, which is a card you can see from this arrow, switches hands a lot over the course of the game, but she gets to start with it. She starts with the same seven personality cards I do. These are the personalities of Rome that we can influence to do different actions. That's the setup. Oh, and also the board itself has been randomly seeded with a lot of goods. So in this game, Neopolis will generate food, but next time you play, it might generate wine as these things get spread around. And also, each of these provinces on the map, there's 12 of them, you know, uh, you know, Venetia and Sicily and Campania, whatever they're all called, each one of them has a key resource it produces. And the way that is figured, let's look at Sicily, you know, the green region over here. It has three cities. One that produces brick, one that produces cloth, one that produces tools. And in the structure of the game, bricks are the least valuable, all the way up to cloth, which is the most valuable. So that means the most valuable thing that Sicily produces in this game, with the random setup, is cloth. Because it has a cloth. You know, if it had, had a wine, it would be wine, because wine is the second most valuable. So, Sicily's most valuable production is cloth, and that means we come over here to this production board, and we, mention, we note that Sicily got a cloth icon on it. So, that's an important thing, that whenever you activate Sicily, it's going to generate cloth, plus potentially other stuff. And so this board, all of these regions gets their, you know, Corsica, the best thing it produces is wine. The best thing um, Amelia produces is tools and so on. So based on the random seating of the board, these things got set up. Seven random personality cards are out. We've got our starting stuff. The game is set up. Let's go, 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 go. Now, this game is very smooth, very simple and elegant, although it's hugely um, deep. There's a lot to think about every turn. But on every turn, all you do is play one card. So I'm the first player, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna play a card. Now let's look at our cards. I've got a prefect. This is the guy who, if I've already set up colonies out on the board, the prefect makes the colonies produce either money or goods. So this is how I get money and goods. And I've actually, I got, at the beginning of the game, I believe, yeah, we both have two prefect cards that are 
they're exactly the same. So we have two goods generation, money generation cards. I've also got a senator. I play him to recruit additional personalities and build my deck. The more of these I have in my deck, the more powers I've got. So that's what the senator does. The merchant, the mercator, lets me make some money and then trade, either buy or sell. Because I might produce a lot of wine where I am, but it turns out I need food so I can sell the wine I'm producing, buy food, and then use that elsewhere. So that's what the mercator's for. The architect is the main way, basically the architect does two things. It lets me move my colonist pawns around and that lets me build colonies in all the you know ad adjacent areas. So this is how I move around and expand my colonial empire. The Diplomat's a special card. It basically, whenever I play it, I look at what the last card my opponent played was, and I get to duplicate that power. So if I've already done my Architect for a round, and I really want to do Architect again, I can wait for Jen to play her Architect, and then boom, play my Diplomat, and I get to use her Architect. And then finally, Tribune is a very important card. This is the card that basically lets me get my deck back. And I'll demonstrate that as we go. But basically, what I'm going to do is every turn I'm going to play one card, it goes into my discard pile, and I just keep playing them into my discard pile. Eventually, I won't have very many cards left. And I'll play my Tribune to get all my cards back. So it basically means I spend a whole turn with my Tribune card to get my deck back. And the timing of when I do that is a big part of the strategy. But for starters, at the beginning of the game, I think I, where is he? I'm gonna play my Architect card. So it goes over here into my discard pile, which means Jen could copy it with her Diplomat if she wanted, not that she will, but, so I'm gonna play um, Architect, which has two things. First, it lets me move my colonists around and then lets me build in cities adjacent to my colonists. Now at the beginning of the game, I can't build because my colonists aren't adjacent to any city. They're inside Rome. But say if I moved this ship over here. That means, because the ship is here, I could build in, um, in this Sicilian town, Panor Panormus, or Neapolis, because they're both adjacent. So I could build a food generating colony or a tools generating colony. But that's if my ship was over here. First, I gotta move my guys. The way movement works is, I count the number of colonists I have active. In the beginning of the game, it's two. Over time, I might get more colonists on the board. But at the beginning of the game, I've got two colonists, and that means I've got two movement points to spend. I could move each of these guys once, or I could move one of them twice. And that's what I'm gonna do. I, hmm. See, and I could move anywhere. It's where I move is basically going to determine where can I set up colonies. Where I set up colonies determines what goods I get. What goods I get determines what else I can do. So, it's an important decision. I think I'm going to spend my two actions, and I'm going to move this ship one, two. You see, they don't actually land in the cities. They always move from route to route. So, if I want to get all the way to the other side of the world, I could go one, two two, three, four, five, if I had five action, and move all the way there. But I'm gonna move from Rome, one, two. And now that's all my movement. And so, uh, my, my other colonist is no good because he's not adjacent to any cities, but this colonist is, so that means I can build in Alaria and Olbia in Corsica. I can build in Corsica. And remember, that's the second thing. First I move, and then I can build in cities adjacent to my colonist. So I'm gonna do that. In fact, I'm going to build in both of these. I'm going to build a colony in both of these two locations. So, I'm, that means I'm going to build a brick producing colony and a wine producing colony. And the cost for that is on this handy dandy little card that everybody has. If I want to build in a brick town, it costs, yeah, this is a brick town, it costs one food and one sesteri. So, it's going to cost me a food and a sesteri to build here. And I also want to build in this wine town. And so wine costs one brick, one wine, and four sesteri, which is my other. So basically, I have spent all my money and half of my resources to build these two colonies. So just all that stuff goes back to the bank. Bye-bye. And I have built in Alaria and Oblia. And so that was my turn. I used my architect card, I moved as much as I could, and then I built as much as I could, or as much as I wanted to. You know, Both of these are optional. I could have just played the architect only to build if I wanted, or only to move. But in this case, I did both. I moved, and I built two cities. And now that means, interestingly, interestingly this is kind of nice, I have pretty much taken a monopoly of Corsica. There's only two cities here, and I've got controlling interest in both of them. If Jen wanted to, she could move a ship over here and then she could build into these, but for her to build in here would be hugely expensive. Later on in the game, she might do that. But for now, early in the game, we don't have enough money, so she can't pay the premium to get into an already occupied city. 
So that was my first move. I moved out and I pretty much took control of Corsica and I am now in the brick and wine producing business. And I've still got some resources, et cetera, et cetera. Now it's Jen's turn. What is she gonna do? She's got the same seven cards as me. Like I said, if she wanted, she could, where is it? She could play her diplomat and copy my architect, but she's got other plans. She's gonna go a different way. She is gonna play her senator card. So this goes into her discard pile. Okay, and now she can purchase up to two personality cards and put them directly into her hand. This is the deck building. She is going to increase, her deck is gonna go from seven cards to either eight or nine, depending on if she buys one or two personalities. So let's look at what is on offer up here. Architect, Prefect, Colonist, Diplomat, Farmer, Mercator, and Mason. And they get more expensive. This architect only costs one tools and nothing else. Whereas this, this Mercator over here costs a wine, a cloth, and another um, resource of Jen's choice. So now she starts with a bunch of resources. It doesn't cost money to, to basically get influence over these guys, it just costs goods. So she can, she can probably afford to get two. So she's probably gonna get two. And which ones is she gonna get? This is a huge element of strategy because not only are you giving yourself more abilities and making your deck more powerful, you're also giving yourself more end game scoring options, which I'll describe in a second. But first of all, let me just decide. Now, I don't think she wants to pay too much. She wants to hold on to her resources for other stuff. But I know she definitely wants this farmer because this farmer lets you produce food on all your farms, all your food producing cities. And if you look right next to where we start, there's a whole bunch of food producing cities. So if Jen could like get control over a few of these and get the farmer card, that'd be a really nice combination. So I think Jen definitely wants to buy the farmer. So she, it costs her one cloth and then it also costs her one brick and one food. So she's gonna pay all that and that's one of her two hires and this goes directly into her deck. And now she could, she doesn't have to, but she could hire another one. Let's see, and so she's still got food, wine, and tools. So that's kind of, let's see. So she could buy this because all it requires is tools. This requires wine and something else. So she could get either of those. This requires food and something else, so she can get any of these. All these other ones require cloth, though, so she cannot afford any of these. So she's down to picking one of those three. Does she want a colonist, another, which nobody has yet. Nobody's got a colonist at the beginning of the game. Does she want a prefect, or does she want an architect? I think she's going to take the colonist, because there's only a few colonist cards, if I recall correctly. I think there's only two. In a two-player game, there's only two of them that will ever come out. So Jen's just gotten half of the colonist. So that costs her, as you can see, one food and then something else. What's she going to give up? She either has to give up her wine or her tools. Let's see, now she's planning on going off in this direction. There's a wine up here. I think, you know, there's tools over here. I think she's gonna give up her tools. So she paid a tools and a food to recruit this colonist. And that goes into her deck as well. Now, after you're done with the sander action, all the other stuff becomes cheaper. And a smith and a weaver have come out. Okay, so that was Jen's turn. Very different. I started land grabbing, Jen started personality grabbing. Now, before I go any farther, I should spend a little bit more time talking about these. So basically, Jen's just gotten the colonist and the farmer. These are both new cards that give her abilities that I don't have. Although, remember, if Jen ever plays the colonist card, I could then play my diplomat card and copy it. So even though I don't have a colonist card, I could always, if I hold on to my diplomat and wait for Jen to play her colonist, I could use the colonist action as well. It's very important to pay attention to when people have or haven't played their diplomats because, you know, sometimes Jen might not want me to play my diplomat. Jen might wait and play her colonist after I played my diplomat so that I can't benefit from her colonist card because it's special to her. So anyway, the colonist and the farmer, their new abilities. The colonist lets you um, create new colonists. Remember, we started with for extra, the colonist is a way that you can get these onto the board so you can enhance your ability to spread. Or, you so you can build more colonists and it costs food and tools, or instead, you could tax your existing colonists, which means you get five bucks immediately plus one for every colonist. So at the beginning of the game, this means seven. So this is a great way to make money. At this early in the game, this is the best way to make money very, very fast. So she's got that, and then she's also got farmer, which means whenever she plays this, she produces food in all of her farms. So she wouldn't want to do this until she's got a few farms. Now, but there's two other things on here. Remember, they had the price that required to recruit them, but you'll notice they have this god, Minerva and Mars, and you know, uh, the senator has Vesta. All of the cards have a god at the bottom. This comes into end game scoring. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about end game scoring right now. 
Because you have a basic idea, you, we, can, we can expand, we can spread, we can produce, we can buy, we can sell, we can recruit. Those are all the actions we can do. The reason we're doing them is because at the end of the game, we will score points for a bunch of different stuff. Every 10 bucks at the end of the game will score us one point. Every city that we've built in that is not a brick, bricks are the cheapest, they're easy to build in, so they don't apply towards the Jupiter bonus, but every non-brick city gets us one point. Every province that we have a foothold in, just if, as long as we have one colony in a province, that's a point. So, and there's 12, so if, if, if we really spread out, we could get 12 points off of, of the Saturn, off of provinces. Production. This is for every type of good we can produce, we get two points. So right now, if the game ended right now, I can produce wine and bricks. So that's two plus two. That's four points I get for um, the, the, the Mer Mercurius uh, god of uh, production. Mars means the number you get two points for every colonist. If the game ended right now, we'd each get four points because right now we each have two colonists. But remember, Jen has a good way to produce more colonists. So if she uses this colonist card to get more colonists out, she gets more points at two points for every colonist. And then finally, Minerva is a god where it's specialist. And like for instance, this Weaver is a Minerva card, which means you score five points at the end of the game for every cloth city. And remember, Jen just got one. She just got the Farmer Minerva, which means at the end of the game, she gets three points for every, um, that's a picture of food, for every food generating city she's in. So the Minerva ones are kind of special case, depending on which ones you got. There's only one of, there's one Minerva for every good in the game. And Jen's just gotten one of them. There's only four more out there. So now, that's all pretty straightforward. So you can imagine, you can really specialize in getting a lot of money or spread out amongst all the provinces or just try to get all, you, you really want to get like, do really well in probably two or three of these things and kind of touch on all of them because there's points here galore. But here's the interesting thing. For instance, right now, Jen, because she got the colonist card, she has a Tribune. We both have a Tribune, so we both have one Mars. Jen has a colonist. So at the end of the game, she's, if the game ended right now, she would show that she's got two Mars cards. And so what that means is, she, Mars is colonist. She would find out how many colonists she has. It's two. So it'd be two, I mean, it's a point. It's, it's two points for every colonist, so that means she has four points for her colonists. But because she has two cards, two Mars cards, well, actually what it means is, basically at the end of the game, she'll say, hey, I've got a Mars card. How many points does it score me? Two per colonist, that's four. Hey, I've got another Mars card. How many colonists? That's four. So right now, Jen is gonna score eight points at the end of the game for her colonists. So it's an interesting set collection. If Jen can, she wants to get more Mars cards now, and you know another one is gonna come out later in the game. And if she can get that, that means every one of her colonists is worth, currently every one of her colonists is worth four points. Every one of my colonists is worth two points. But her, every one of her colonists could be worth six points. So that's another wrinkle. In addition to trying to spread out and grab the right resources so you can like you know you want to get production of all the different types but you also want to be smart about the new abilities you get because these are different scoring opportunities and you really want to focus if you get a lot of these Minerva cards well you really want to focus on all those things if you get a lot of Saturn cards you really want to focus a lot on getting in all the provinces so you're building your own in-game scoring based on the cards you recruit sorry that was a very long-winded way to say that if you can set collect get more uh, you know, like for instance, at the beginning of the game, we both start with two Jupiter cards. Jupiter is city. It means we get one point for every city we're in that isn't a brick. Right now, I am in one city. So my two Jupiter cards would give me two points for this city. But the more cities I get in, the more my Jupiter cards pay off. The more Jupiter cards I have, so you can see, the more of these cards you get that are focused on a thing, the more you want to focus on that on the board. Sorry, that was very long-winded. I've said that already. Let's continue. The important thing was Jen played a senator, and she got a couple things, and now she can start focusing on an end goal which is really, more than anything else, getting more colonists out because she is stronger in colonists than me and she has the colonist card that will let her do it. Back to my turn, I'm gonna do another thing now. Now I am going to use one of my prefect cards. Remember you got two of them, so I'm gonna play this. Okay, now what this does, turn over, I, I, have, I have a choice, I can either generate money or goods. Now at this point, there's no money to be generated, so I'm gonna generate, I'm gonna do the top half. Turn over one active province tile to take the production bonus, and then the province, province produces. Currently, I am the only person with a foothold in any province. I've got these two colonies in Corsica. So I can choose any 
of the 12 provinces and cause them to generate. So if I, if I chose Sicily right now, that means Sicily would generate for me one cloth. If I chose um, uh, Lusania right now, Lusania would generate for me one tool. But I'm not gonna generate those. Since I'm in Corsica, I'm gonna, I'm gonna activate Corsica, which means Corsica, because I, I activated it, generates me one, what do you call it, one wine. And then I flip this to indicate that Corsica has produced. So I got one wine for flipping it. And now we come over here and every town in Corsica that is occupied produces. So Alberta produces a brick and Olbia produces another wine. So by playing the prefect, I just got three resources. Now the interesting thing was, if, if say if Jen had been in here and I chose Corsica, I would get the wine, I would get a brick, and Jen would get this wine because she's in her town. And if we were both in this town, we would generate a wine for both of us. So that's why it's, it's not a bad idea to get into you know, a town that somebody else has already taken. If they're gonna activate that province a lot, you might want to you know, get a little bit of those goods for yourself. So, but anyway, I monopolized Corsica right now. So that's why I activated Corsica and got myself a bunch of goods. Next turn, I might sell this wine off to make a lot of money and buy something else. We'll see. Anyway, so that was my second turn. I played the prefect. Now, Jen, her second turn is she is going to, where is it? Let's see. Now, what she wants to do is play the architect, right, and move out and start, like I did in my first turn, start taking over these food producing towns because she's got her farmer card. But she used all her resources. She won't be able to, to build in a food producing town. You need a brick and a food and two bucks. Now she's got plenty of money, but she has no bricks and food. So I think what that means she's gonna do is, she is going to play the Mercator card. Where is it? D -d -d. Mercator, there we go. So she plays Mercator. That means immediately she gets to take three bucks. One, two, three for just being a good merchant. So she's got, what, she's got nine bucks now to her name. And trade in up to two types of goods. That's either a buy or sell of two types. And now Jen's got a lot of money. I think she's gonna buy. Because she wants to get over here. She wants some bricks. Remember, to build in these, in these farm zones, you need bricks and food. She's got one food left. If she were able to like build in all these farms, that would require one, two, three food and one, two, three bricks. Can she afford that? Let's see, she has one food. Two more food would cost her eight bucks. She only has nine. So she's gonna buy one more food. All right, so she's paying uh, one more food. Food is expensive. Oops, ah, no, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I was looking at my food. Jen has no food, she used it all up. So but anyway, so she's gonna buy food. And now she could buy as much food as she wants, as she can afford, because this is one of her two types. First she says, she says I'm, I'm um, merchanting, I'm doing Mercator stuff with food. She could either buy or sell as much food as she wants. She could buy more food, but she's saving her money. So she's done with her food. Now her second, the second whatchamacallit, that she's gonna buy is, um, yeah, the, the second good she's gonna buy is bricks. Bricks are cheap. She's gonna buy, oh, she doesn't have enough money. Oh, shoot. She could buy one brick, but she's a little bit shy. She wants to be able to buy two bricks. Because if she had two bricks, she could use a brick and a wood to build here and a brick and a wine to build there. But she wouldn't have the money she needs either. Okay, then I know what she's gonna do. Scratch that, she is not. She's changing her mind. She's not playing Mercator because I just couldn't be bothered. All right, so let's put the food back, get her four bucks back. Okay, and put the three bucks back. Right, instead of Mercator, remember that new card she got, Colonist? She's gonna play it right now, boom. She has a choice, she can either spend food and tools, which she doesn't have, to, to get more Colonists, but instead, she's gonna tax her Colonists. She will get five, but she's Colonist, so that means she gets seven bucks. Five, six, seven. And now, she's got a lot of money. She's got the money she needs to buy the resources. So that was her turn, she played the Colonist. Now, she played Colonist, I'm not gonna miss a trick, I am definitely going to play Diplomat because that means I get to copy her. And since I don't have a colonist card, I'm gonna copy her and I'm gonna do the same thing. I am also gonna get seven bucks. So that was very, very nice. So you know, the, again, the timing of Diplomat is very important. And ultimately, you can do, recruit more Diplomats, which means maybe you're not strong, but you're strong in copying other people. So that's cool. So anyway, so I, Jen played a colonist, got some money. I copied her, got some money. Jen's turn again. Now she's got the money she needs. So now, she will play her Mercator, and which means she gets three more bucks, one, two, three, 
Now she's got what she needs. She is gonna buy some bricks. So first of all, she's gonna buy bricks. Let's say she buys two bricks, and that costs her, bricks are three, so that costs her six bucks. The, the price has never changed, they never fluctuate, by the way. So it costs her six bucks, and she gets two bricks. Brick, brick. And now she's still got 10. So she could buy more bricks, but she's done. So now, so for other tool, she could choose to sell wine, but she's not gonna do that. Instead, she is gonna buy food. I see and food costs four, so, and she's got 10, so she's gonna buy two food. So she paid 10, she gets two and change, and she bought two food. Very nice, okay. And you can see, she's starting to fill up. If you fill up, if you run out of space, you just can't buy anymore. You cannot discard stuff. You can only sell stuff, you can't discard it. But she still had space, so that was her turn, she did the merchant. Back to me. Now I'm starting to run out of cards. Jen's got two more than me, so she's gonna go a while. But I, let's see, I can senator it, which means I could recruit some cards. I could produce some more to get some more goods. I could um, Tribune, which means get my cards back, or I could Merchant it and try to get some more money or some more resources. And I need resources to take over. You need resources to hire people and take over um, zones, cities. You need money just to take over the cities. You never need money to, take, to get those people. What do I want to do? I think I, hmm. Now the interesting thing is, I cannot take over any more towns because this guy is not adjacent and the only um, place this guy is adjacent to. So I would have to move before I could take over any more cities. So I'm not going to be able to do that until I use my Tribune to get my Architect card back. So what do I want to do? I think I'm going to recruit some people now too. So I'm going to play the Senator and let's see who I can recruit now that I've picked up some stuff. I've got uh, food, two wine, brick, Alrighty, I definitely, if I can, I want to hold, let's see, now I want to hold on to this brick, because brick is hugely important for building. And if I'm thinking about, after I get my cards back, I might move my ship, say, one, two. And that means I could build in these two spaces. So if I think ahead, I would want a brick and a cloth for this zone, and brick, all I need, I would need a food for this zone. Oh, that's really interesting. I've got everything I need to build in those two spaces. Oh, plus I need money. I would need five bucks, and six, so I'd need six bucks, and I've got the money too. Interesting. I think, actually, I, let's see, so I was back here. Now I could go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip the table a bit. I'm going to, I'm not gonna do, and try and spend more time getting uh, my merchant out, trying to do some more production. I'm gonna play my Tribune right now, because I want my cards back. I'm gonna get my deck back. I play this. Take back all your personality cards and get one Sisteri for each card taken in excess of three. Uh, include the Tribune in this count. So, I'm taking all my cards back. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Excess of three means three plus two is five, so I get two bucks now for taking my cards back. So you are receiving your reward. The, more, the longer you wait to play your Tribune, the more money you get. But I'm ca cashing out earlier and getting all my cards back. So I spent my turn getting my cards back. Next turn, I'm gonna come over here and take over these zones. But in the meantime, I can also do one more thing. In addition, I can build a colonist for a food and a tools. Now I've got the food and tools. But if I use the food to recruit a colonist, that means I wouldn't have the food to build this colony over there in Nicaea. So I am gonna pass. Even though I could get another colonist right now, I'm gonna pass on that, and so that was my turn. Now it's Jen's turn again. And she's still got a bunch of cards she's gonna play. Righty. Now, what is she gonna do? Uh, so she's gotten some, or she's got, oh right, that's right, she wants to move out and start building some zones herself. So she is gonna use her architect, boom, move her colonists, and she can move up to two spaces because she has two. She's gonna go one, two on land. And now she can build a here and here because that's where she's adjacent. And remember, I think she had it, what she needed. She needed a brick and a, and a brick. And, uh, uh oh, shoot, 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 shoot. I didn't think about the money. She has the resources she needs to build in those two spaces, but in addition to the brick and the wine, she needs four Sisteri and two, she needs six bucks. She only has four. So she can't do this right now. Hold, she needs more, more money. Hold on a second then. Is she gonna do architect? Or is she gonna try and get some cash? Let's see now, she used the best card she could to get cash, which was her colonist. So if she wants another infusion of cash, she could use her prefect, 
or yeah, not her prefect, her tribune to get her colonist card back to get her money. Because she's only got two bucks. There's other ways to get money though. She could, well again, using her tribune would give her more money. It would uh, give her, well actually would it? She's played three cards. So this is, she would only get one buck for playing her tribune, but then she could play her colonist, get the money she needs, and then grab both of these high value areas. Or, if she wants to wait, if she wants to wait longer so she'll get more money off her Tribune, what else would she do? Let's see, she could, oh, wait a minute, can you diplomat somebody else's Tribune? I don't think you can. Let's look at that. To the rules. Um, where is it? Uh, tribune, Tribune, Tribune. For the rules. Storehouse, perfect, thanks. Colonist, Specialist, Consul, Diplomat, Mercator, Architect, Tribune. Um, the player recovers all the previously played cards in his hand. Oh, wait, no, no, I'm sorry, no, I, I want the Diplomat, the Diplomat. So I think there were some restrictions on the Diplomat. Um, actions that, uh, of players who recently used their Diplomat card to and took back their cards into their hand with their Tribune card cannot... Right, so Jen could not copy somebody who used the Diplomat card, or somebody used her, so she cannot copy the Tribune. I thought that was the case. If she could, she would use her Diplomat to copy my Tribune and get her cards back right now, but she's not going to do that. Right, so she's not going to Architect because she needs more money. Prefect. Um, she's going to start getting money. Well, this would be kind of slow, but it would let her do what she needs to do. Right, so that's what she's going to do. She's going to play her Prefect card. Now remember, when I used my Prefect card, I generated goods in Corsica. Jen's going to do the other thing. Activate all province tiles to take the bonus or reactivate all province tiles and take the bonus as cash. So if we look over here, I have flipped one. Jen says, I want cash. I am taxing Corsica. So she gets two bucks and flips this back over. So Jen just made two bucks. All right, so she's got four bucks now. Not as much as she wants. She wants six bucks, but it's gotten her a little bit closer to her goal. My turn again. I can start all over because I've reset my deck. And where's my architect? I'm gonna move out because I've got what I need. Okay. Move my colonists. I'm, see, I'm playing the arc. Move my colonists. I'm just gonna move this guy. One, two, and then build. And now I'm gonna build. I need a food. And what is it? A food and one cisteri. And to build in the cloth space, I need five cisteri and a brick and a cloth. So I pay all of that. And I take over. Again, not permanently, I just I have the controlling interest currently in these two spaces. Very nice. All right, and I've, well, actually, I've still got some stuff left over, but I have, so I'm doing really good grabbing land, but I haven't grabbed any cards here, which means I haven't gotten any points multipliers. I don't know, like Jen, who's getting points multipliers. All right, so that was my turn. Jen's turn again. She needs two more bucks. <sighs> right. So, now, she, the way she can get money, she could use the Mercator, but the Mercator's already been used, so she can't use that again. She could w diplomat me when I use my Mercator. She could, let's see, actually, she has no way to get money right now, and she really wants to wait. She doesn't want to reset her deck yet, because she wants to get more money off resetting the deck. Um, but the farmer, she has no land yet. She can move her colonists just to get them into position, but she still have to do this again later to build. Prefect, so she could just generate some goods. Tribune, um, now I think she's gonna, I think it's time to take the Tribune. She could wait no longer, she takes the Tribune card. So, I mean, she gets all her cards back. One, two, three, four, five. So is it five, just like me, one, two. Ah, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, so over three, she's got two or three, so that means she gets two bucks. And all her cards come back to her hand. And if she wants, she could recruit a colonist. Remember, she's got the colony card, but she could recruit colonists for a tool which she doesn't have in food. So she's not gonna do that. She didn't get the colonist. All right, my turn again. Now, I want to produce. I wanna produce, um, so I'm gonna prefect and start producing more goods. I'm gonna produce over here now. I'm gonna activate Lijveria. Uh, and so Lijveria, as you can see, where is it? Generates the best thing. Oh, where's Lijveria? Lijveria is, oh, it's over here. Um, right there. So the Lichviria, I get to flip this, so I generate one cloth. I get that. And I also get another cloth, because I own that building, and another brick. So, and with that brick, I'll be able to build more. I'll be able to expand further. So that was my turn. And now Jen, finally, she's going to move out into Farmville. 
And you know what, she gave me so much time. Maybe I should have moved over here and gotten these farms to prevent her from benefiting from her farmer. But now it's too late. I took too long. I was off messing around with my own stuff. But you know what, actually I think I'm going to stop right there because you've definitely got a bunch of basics. This is 34 minutes long and if you'd like to see her start setting up her farm empire, we'd like to see us start getting some more emperor, uh, some more personalities. You'd like to see this Prefectus Magnus card come into play because this hasn't happened yet. Um, go on ahead and hit the button that's on screen right now for extended play and I'll play through a few more rounds. We'll see how far it goes. I'll try to demonstrate some more because there's definitely more going on. Alternatively, you can hit the other button and go straight to final thoughts. Your choice. Five, four, Three, two, one.